Welcome to episode four of Two Dumb White Guys, live from the Portageville High School faculty Christmas party. Yes, me and Mr. Norman are wearing our festive holiday sweaters and our Santa hats and have podcasting equipment out while the rest of the Portageville faculty is staring at us like we are insane, which we're used to that to begin with. Yeah, it's kind of the normal thing uh, when I walk in any room. <laughs> But we got our eggnog. Uh, my my Christmas sweater has a penguin on it, wearing sunglasses, saying "Let's chill." And uh, mine actually is just a Santa face with a circle and a line through it, and then there's a Grinch peeking out from behind him. All right, but yes, we're here. This is a Christmas episode or a holiday episode, however you feel like going that way. Uh, once again, my name is Paul Davidson. And I am Scott Norman. And we're going to talk to you about Xmas and all of the like and what not. So let's get, let's get we, jolly. We, we have some top lists. So we're going today for, for like kind of the top three in some major categories having to do with Christmas and then tackling some of the big thoughts. Yes, the major issues with Xmas and the holiday season and the month of December in general. So we'll start off with Xmas movies, Christmas movies. Mr. Norman, what if, do you want it to go three to one or one to three? I think we need to go three to one. I think All we right. need to do the countdown, but honestly, I'm not going to lie, I really struggled getting this below five. Below five? <laughs> yes, and you'll see, you'll understand, you'll understand. I easily had three. I was like, this one, this one, this one, done. See, my, it's, it's a struggle, and you'll, <laughs> you'll see, I'm going to go ahead and give you kind of the five, but the top three are still the top three. So, start off with your honorable mentions. What are your okay. honorable mentions? So, my honorable mentions, um, one that honestly I would have put at number one if I had a stronger case for it being a Christmas movie. Die Hard. No, that one that one has a strong enough case. <laughs> that one has plenty of a strong case. Uh, and way to be a spoiler, because that one might actually be <laughs> on my list. But um, The Princess Bride. So according to some sources, the movie The Princess Bride actually happens at Christmas. And for those of you who have not seen it, so go watch it. So Fred Savage is sick on Christmas. Correct. And his That explains why his grandfather is around. Yes, and he says this is a present. And so the story then is that he has come over and it is either on or immediately after Christmas and he's bringing this present, which is the book yeah, that I, he then reads. But I, I find that hard. That's a, that's a stretch. So, that is a stretch. As much as I love Andre the Giant, that oh, is a yeah. stretch. My name is Inigo Montoya. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Prepare to die. Anyway, so uh, so that was too much of a stretch. Uh, otherwise, it would have been number one. Um, and then, of course – Coming in uh, as the second honorable mention, which would have been my number four, is Die Hard. You, you is stole Die my Hard. thunder. Yeah. So that, that, that um, was one of the questions I was going to ask after the Christmas movie countdown was, <laughs> is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Absolutely. And you're in the camp of that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I think Die Hard's a Christmas TV movie, but Bruce Willis, Die Hard himself, <laughs> John McClane, does not think it's a Christmas movie. Uh, he's not the director. <laughs> he just showed up and read stuff. All right, so number three. Let's start off with your number three. All right, number three, bringing up the final spot, drum roll please, is It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life comes in at number three. Interesting. Number three, yes. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life is not my number three, but it will make an appearance on my list. Okay. Uh, why It's a Wonderful Life? So I, I picked it at number three. Um, we always in my family would watch it. But not on Christmas. We would always watch it like the weekend after Thanksgiving, sometimes the day of Thanksgiving, because it just kind of got us in that Christmas spirit, you know? That's interesting, because like, I never actually watch Christmas movies on Christmas. I watch them in the month of December, but I never actually watch them on Christmas Day. I think I've watched one on my list, which is my number three on Christmas Day once, but that was about it. Yeah, we. I mean, I can't really think of any movies that I've watched on Christmas um, because usually on Christmas, you know, you when growing up, you get the presents and then you go play with them. And so a lot of mine involved outdoors or Legos. And so me and my wife did go watch a movie at Christmas uh, a couple of years ago, and we went and watched Bad Moms for Christmas. <laughs> not a Bad Moms Christmas, which is not on the list, but just Bad. Wait, those moms. are two separate things. Yes, oh. those are two. Like that was the sequel to Bad Moms was Bad Moms Christmas. I see. I was unaware. Yes, uh, my number three. Love Actually. 
Um, so I've never seen that. You've never seen Love Actually. It is. I have not. All right. So you're, you are familiar with like the Valentine's Day, the New Year's Day, the Mother's Day movies. Yeah. Where it's like a bunch of different stories that kind of all come together. Love Actually was the first one of those, and by far heads heads above every other one. Love so this Actually is, this is, is the, the best one, one that like everything else is copying. Everyone else is copying Love Actually, and Love Actually is the best one. It has Liam Neeson in it, who he's not trying to take or not trying to avenge a kidnapping. Is or he anything. a lion? He's not a lion oh, either. It. Like it's just Liam Neeson being Liam. I, I if this was a not safe for school podcast, I could tell you what Liam Neeson does in the movie. No, I don't. Which wanna... is weird, but <laughs> interesting. Oh and, gosh, but uh, no, it's an, it's a perfect like. There's a lot of like kind of inappropriate stuff with that, but it is a a great Christmas movie. It takes place around Christmas. The big culminating moment is at a Christmas play. It is an excellent Christmas movie. Uh, well, I might have to check it out. Except I, I guess apparently I'll have to just kind of skip past <laughs> Liam Neeson. I don't. He does. He all right. Liam Neeson himself does not do anything inappropriate. It's just he uh, he basically plays wingman for his. Uh, eight-year-old stepson. <laughs> oh my! All right, so <laughs> we will move on to number two. Let's see how much our lists overlap because you've said now that that my number three is on your list yes. somewhere. Um, I it was a close for number three. You know, three to one here. My number two, I'll have to make an argument for again. Rocky four. Rocky Four. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna lie. I love Rocky Four. It's not on my list at all. Rocky Four is like, bar none, one of my favorite movies. How many movies are there where a boxer single handedly defeats communism? And he does it on Christmas. And he does it on Christmas. There's a whole scene of him going through the snow. It's There's all decorated. The robot that's wearing the Christmas hat. It's. I mean, it <laughs> is. It is in my mind just as much a Christmas movie as Die Hard. So go ahead if you want to debate in the comments, feel free. But once again, if you've actually seen Rocky Four, if you haven't, you buckle up because, like, it's, I guess it, you have to watch one through three first, though. You really don't. Well, I get, you need to watch one because one, like, the contrast of Rocky One versus Rocky Four is night and day. Rocky yes. One is a gritty, low budget, like just this down on his luck boxer that is coming. That's coming up, and then Rocky Four is this boxer. Goes to Russia and defeats the country. And defeats the country of Russia in the most patriotic. Actually, I guess the better thing is he wins the heart of Russia. Have you ever seen the third? Like you know, thirty for thirty, right? Yeah. ESPN's thirty for thirty. Have you ever seen the YouTube video of somebody parodying thirty for thirty, but they acted like Rocky IV actually happened? <laughs> No, I have not, but I will is, add that to my list worth, of things. It is worth a watch. The thing I always found interesting about Rocky IV is that the United States is, of course, like the world power and whatnot. And yes. It's supposed to have like all the advanced stuff, but it, in, in the movie, it's the Russians who have like the advanced super technology and the United States who is training with like in barns and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, lifting rocks, <laughs> wheelbarrows full of things, sprinting through the snow and losing the KGB. The, uh, uh, the best part about that movie as far as like the the Americana and the Christmas though is just the fact that to celebrate Christmas his present is world peace. It is. It just he delivers world I mean peace. Santa top that. Like he's in Russia and the Russians begin to Absolutely. Chant, roof for Rocky. They start <laughs> chanting Rocky. Sorry to spoil the movie for you guys. It's uh, still worth the watch. It's it's a great movie. Uh my number two is It's a Wonderful Life. It is, an, it is a great Christmas movie. I actually had, uh, about two years ago, I had my seniors watch It's a Wonderful Life that last week of school just to have something to do. And they were like, oh, it's black and white. But then they started to get into it. And they were like, hey, this is actually not that bad of a movie. Because it's not. It actually is a really legitimately good movie. It also, uh, I actually use it in my history class. Bank run? Uh, yeah, talking about the bank run. Even though I guess technically it's a buildings and loan run. But it's the same idea. And he explains the economic behind it to the people there to try and get them to calm down. So it's it's educational, it's Christmassy, it's deep, it's great. I also like the I like how like even though it's obvious like he's a forty year old man playing a high schooler. Yeah. Uh, the the back and forth between he, him and his future wife at the beginning there of the movie is just it's very sweet. Buffalo gal, would you come <laughs> I'll lasso that moon for you. That's a bad idea. All right, that's my poor Jimmy Stewart. They, these kids don't even know. Yeah, Jimmy you gotta kind of talk like this to be Jimmy Stewart. All right, you're number one. All right. 
I'm sorry for coughing straight into the mic there. Um, my number one Christmas movie of all time, White Christmas. White Christmas. I have never seen White Christmas. What? I don't even know what White Christmas Are is. Are you serious? Yeah. Bing Crosby? No. Oh, my God. Okay. You I know gotta... the song. I'm yeah. Free, but I've never seen the movie. Okay. I mean, it's cheesy. It's hokey. <laughs> it's got the love story. It's got the humor. It's it's a great movie. It It is one of the very, very, very few movies that uh, my wife and I agree is a good movie. Because if I tried to make her sit down and watch Rocky IV, she'd be asleep in about <laughs> two minutes. Um, so, well, the, 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 you, you, there's your problem. Because you don't start off with the beginning of Rocky IV. You go straight to Apollo Creed and James Brown living in America. <laughs> and then you're all in. That's like... Uh, I think she would probably just walk out of the room. Oh, you can't walk she, out of the room on she, James Brown. She only likes like the really emotional <laughs> kind of like girl movies, you know. It, she would probably that, love that the one scene you're number three. Gets, that scene gets, I don't know, like it, love actually, like it's it's not that emotional. It's it it has love in it, but yeah. it's it's a solid movie. And come on, Rocky Four has its emotion. As soon as it he does. gets done singing and dancing, a very emotional thing happens. Uh, spoiler. Alert. Yeah, spoiler. My number one is Chevy Chase himself, Christmas Vacation. That is my oh, yeah. number one. That is my number one. That I have watched it already this year four times. <laughs> Too early. I've, it's just it's on TV. It's on. They play it on AMC. I just like put it on in the background while I'm like reading or doing whatever I need to do now, while we're cleaning. I just had the just ha- remembered a Christmas movie that my wife and now that I'm just thinking about my wife is going to kill me that it's not on my list. Elf. Elf. I thought about. Uh, I don't love Elf as much as other people do. I think Elf is a fun movie. It's a fine. It's not one of my top three Christmas. Movies. I feel like I don't even know if it cracked my top five. See, I well, I, sorry, sorry, Savannah. Um, I that's my wife. I, I does your wife but, actually listen to the podcast? Um, uh, just in case uh, she ever does. <laughs> so the uh, the top five that I had was probably like I said my my top five. But um, I do appreciate Elf for the fact that it is one of the most quotable movies, uh, as often are Will Ferrell movies. Yes, but, indeed. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I have to give that one the shout-out before we move on to the songs. Um, so feel free, once again, let us know your top fives here. Top fives, top threes. Tell us why we don't know what we're talking about or any of that stuff, which, of course, we are two dumb white guys. Yeah. All right, best songs, top three Christmas songs. Now, with mine, like they will change from year to year. Like that, I will have certain years that I like certain songs, certain years that I don't. Uh, like back when I was in high school, like I was all about like, uh, excuse me, Happy Xmas. War is over. That is like the deepest Christmas song ever. And then I grew up and realized how pretentious John Lennon actually was, and how he is a phony, and how uh, the Catcher in the Rye. Huh, he was uh, that's another thing i want to talk about is the catcher to write i think it's this bad rap because that one guy read it and decided to kill john lennon and everybody thinks it's an evil book the catcher in the rye is not a bad book <laughs> so i'm defending catcher in the rye but i am saying that happy xmas war is over used to be a good song but now i'm just like oh it's a song but it's not in my top three all right so are you gonna go first on this one or am i gonna go first i can start us off all right so start take us off starting now, at number three actually i'm gonna have some honorable mentions okay go ahead my honorable it. mentions are actually albums that okay. i play in my classroom occasionally okay my number one album that i like to play around this time of year is the charlie brown christmas music for the oh, charlie brown okay. christmas uh, that album i like to play it's good background music and all that fun stuff and the other shout out i give as an honorable mention is chill hop winter essentials <laughs> i love chill hop and they re- release the and it's kind of christmasy and wintery and i like playing is chill hop a band or is this like a spotify it's a list genre it's a genre of music you have you ever been on youtube and saw chill relax Chill beats to relax slash study slash game to yeah it, i've seen things like yes, that yeah it's basically that but j- geared towards winter and Christmas. Now, is this the stuff that has, like, rain in the background and, like... Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Uh, my number three song, though, and it just cracked into the top three this year. This is this uh, this year's song. It's a rising star. It's a rising star, even though it is an old song. It is, And you might know it from the 23andMe commercial. Oh, no. It is the Christmas Baby Please Come On Home by Darling Love. It's the Christmas... That song. <laughs> that gave me no indication of what on earth that song is. <laughs> Christmas. Da, da, da. Yeah. 
Yeah, I I don't know. I didn't know the song before, and I don't know it anymore. Don't know now. It now. now, if if we could, if we wouldn't get pulled down from YouTube, I would play it right now. For, uh, yeah, I you. thought about that. I thought about actually playing the songs as we talked through them, and I was like, you know, uh, no one will ever hear any of this podcast yes. if we do that. So, so that was my number three. It's Darling Loves uh, Christmas, Baby. Please come home. All right, so uh, I was going to cheat. You kind of did this with your honorable mentions. Uh, So I'm going to give an honorable mention, and then I'm going to cheat on my number three a little. So my honorable mention is Go Tell It on the Mountain, because as a child, I really enjoyed that, and I would, like, stand on things and just yell it. (laughs) Um, And so uh, that probably got annoying, but I enjoyed that song. I couldn't really remember the lyrics except, Go Tell It on the Mountain, when I was trying to remember them, though. So, So it's just honorable mention from my childhood. But my number three... Is an album. Um, it's so, an entire album. It's an album, uh, and it's it's a it's a group. So if you like if you like hip hop, uh, it's it's solid. Basically, Christmas remixing of of a lot of Christmas songs and so carols. It's and DMX, things. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. It is not, <laughs> um, but it is from a group called One One Six Click, and uh, they just have one called The Gift. The and, Gift, and it's just a whole bunch of like. Classic kind of Christmas carols and songs, but remixed so that there's a solid beat behind them and stuff. It's it's worth a listen. Give it a try. Um, once again, we can't play it, but it's it's a solid album of just kind of like you said. It's it's good to have playing in the background. I wouldn't necessarily pick out a single song to be like, yeah, it's a banger, but. <laughs> But it's oh, a good album. My next one is a banger. All right. My next one is a banger. My number two. And I recent, I just changed it. Right before I walked into the Christmas party here, I changed my number two. I was wondering what you were scratching in the hallway I, I, there. Yeah, I changed it up. I changed it up. It, I was like, sorry, sir, Paul McCartney, you're out of here. It's not <laughs> wonderful Christmas time because number two is a song by Tenacious D and <laughs> Sum 41. Is that what you were playing? Called, yes. Okay. Called what I Want. Want. It's basically, it starts off with Santa being like, oh, this kid wants this. This kid wants this. Oh, this is a mighty long list. And the entire three minute song is just Tenacious D yelling about the crazy, ridiculous things that they want for Christmas. Quality. Any, just about any Tenacious D song is probably, yes. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that they were able to sneak onto a Christmas list, but. Quality. It's a, not a well known Tenacious D song, but it is one. I remember I was in college when it came out, and I was like, this is the greatest. Christmas song of all time. It isn't anymore. I have a new number one. Okay. But that was my number two is Tenacious D and Sum 41's What I Want. While we're, uh, like, you know, just shouting random things out, they, uh, did you see them interviewed on Hot Ones? I did not. It's oh, uh, is, yes, I did, actually. It's quality. It took me a while to realize what Hot Ones was. Yes, yes. where they eat the wings and, uh, what is it, hot wings and even hotter questions, mm-hmm. whatever they ask. Um, just like this eggnog. Oh, yeah. So we got to... You can't. You're lactose intolerant. You sorry. Stop drinking my eggnog. I I'll go back to drinking my blue water bottle here, <laughs> the classic. Um, all right. My number two. More eggnog. My number two <laughs> is a uh, is a a true classic. I enjoy it um, both for its uh, general peppiness and um, because I really actually like. If you just read the lyrics. It's really solid about like the real meaning of Christmas, and that is "Hark the Herald Angels Sing." Hark now I know it's Angel way sing. overused; it's played on radio. It's not like it's just one of those overdone Christmas songs, but still, just solid lyrics about what Christmas is really about. And one of the few actual like Christmas song Christmas songs that I can still listen to, because hmm. so many of them I'm just tired of. They've just been played out. Yes, played out. And this one probably like, is played out as well. But like that's one of the things that I ever like. Whenever I was in high school, I was a part of our choir. We actually had boys that were a part of the choir back then. It helped with like have a the range. Yeah. Helped with our range, and we had a Christmas concert every year, and we played those, sang those beat to death type of songs. But at the end of the day, they get stuck in your head. And there's a special place for you with that. None of my songs were one of those, but like Carol of the Bells, I still enjoy Carol of the Bells. Uh-huh. I still enjoy it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh yeah. Everywhere you go. A pair of hop along boots and a pistol shoots is the wish of Johnny and Ben. All right. <laughs> my number one song though. The fact that you remember those names is impressive. <laughs> A dolly that walk and uh, can talk is the hopes of Sally and Je- and Jen. And mom and dad can hardly wait till school can start again. Spoken word Christmas songs <laughs> with Paul Davidson. 
Next up on the list is... Uh, my number one, actually, uh, which is kind of a spoken word Christmas song. Now, I'm going to preference this. Yes, Roll Tide is part of the reason why I've selected this. Oh, no. Because it is the uh, namesake song of our sweet Hawaiian prince of Alabama fans. Yes, my number one song, which I liked even before Tua Tunga Tailoa showed up on an Alabama sideline. It was... Mele Kaliki Maka is a fine way to for a, is the way to sing on this bright Hawaiian Christmas day. Yes, Mele Kaliki Maka by Bing Crosby. Yes, is my number one Christmas song. So uh, here's my question: Is uh, you you said that is that is his that's Tua's song here? Now you you just making the the correlation of no Hawaiian. it is the it is the it is the song that all Alabama fans must appreciate this season because of our because sweet of Hawaiian prince. He's not just Tua Tunga Lailoa. He is our sweet Hawaiian prince. So who I got robbed of the Heisman. I am. Pre- I was surprised about that, honestly. <laughs> um, but just, just I wasn't <laughs> saying because uh, I am. I'm not an Alabama fan uh, personally. Go Simo, go Mizzou. But. Um, since that is true, that means all of you Alabama fans are no longer allowed. And I don't know your personal preference on this. I guess I might have should have saved this for another podcast. But no Alabama fan can give me a hard time about loving pineapple on pizza. Just, just saying. <laughs> I, I like pineapple on pizza. I'm not. I, hey, come at me, bro. Come at me. All right, my number one song is uh, is one that has kind of been maybe a little overplayed recently if you depending on which radio stations you listen to um but it's one by a group called Down Here and it's called How Many Kings um it's a it's just a, once again an awesome song that just really explains why christmas is really a thing and so even though it's not to get too deep into the history of Christmas, but actually the part of Christmas that really probably happened in mid-spring. But the, the part that we, we pretend happened in the winter. I was going to um, talk about that when we discussed the war oh, on Christmas. sorry. It's all right. Um, but, we, could, uh, we could still talk about that. But yeah, so uh, the the song How Many Kings is just how many kings step down from their throne, how many kings, uh, you know, uh, whatever, abandon their home. And uh, gave what they had to help the least of these, and that being us. So, just a great song. Nice, relatively chill song, but solid by the group down here. I highly recommend to listen. While we're on the topic of Christmas songs, uh, one of the things I like to do, because I'm weird, I like to look at like charts of like Spotify, most streamed songs and whatnot. Uh-huh. And over the past month, you see a bunch of Christmas start- songs start creeping up into the charts. Uh, what do you believe are the two most streamed Strictly Christmas songs in the world right now. Huh. Let's see. Candy Cane Lane and uh, <laughs> in Silent Night. I don't know. Nope. Number two. Yeah. Is from the 1980s from a group called Wham. Last Christmas. Oh, you gave okay. me my heart. Guess how many people have listened to Last Christmas just within the last 24 hours? Two million. Yes, 2.3 million yeah. people have listened to Last Christmas on Spotify in the last 24 hours. But that's number two. That's oh, number great. two. The perennial number one, like it, like this person has a lockdown on it, is. Can I have a guess? Yes. Uh, baby, it's cold outside. No. Oh, dang it. It is not. I just wanted to throw that in this podcast somewhere. <laughs> Controversy. It is Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas of Is You." Of course, I should have known With that. Three million plays, which a apparently day. she can no longer sing. Um, she can no longer sing it. Uh, well, there was last uh, last New Year's. There was a she debacle. wasn't singing "All I Want for Christmas <laughs> for You." She was singing a different song I when know. she was lip singing. I was just yeah. And, well, <laughs> then they turned it off, and she was just kind of squawking for a minute. And then, yeah, that was that was that was, that was embarrassing. It was bad. That was embarrassing. Oh, they are they are now resurfacing the ice in the background. I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a Zamboni driving by right now in the background. Yeah, Coach Red is actually on the Zamboni dressed as Santa Claus, yelling ho ho ho. Yeah, he didn't even need a beard. It just kind of went with the Yeah. I've never seen a red bearded <laughs> Santa Claus, but there's a first for everything. The Pirate Santa. <laughs> Pirate Santa, Coach Red. <laughs> All right. So uh 
that's Christmas media, but let's just talk about some Christmas in general. Mr. Norman, when is the appropriate time to start decorating for Christmas? All right, so this is this is a debate that I have with my wife all the time. I actually, uh, after the first year we were married, she she begged me until finally I let her put up Christmas stuff in like mid November. What? And, and I just I I actually what? I actually recorded a video of what? her saying that if I let her put it up then she would never make me put it up that early ever again. And so I now have that video that I show her each year and say no. We are not allowed to put it up. What? She would let Christmas go from like July to December if I let her. So I believe the proper time is the weekend after Thanksgiving you can begin to decorate. What? So You broke my brain. <laughs> I'm just I mean, oh. it, it happened one time. Like I said, we was our first year married. Just had Ow. to had to <laughs> Say yes to the wife. Happy wife, happy life. So uh, that was the only time. That was that was the one time. I differ with you. Like, no, you should never decorate until it is December. I would argue it's the first weekend in December. The I mean, first the weekend, weekend in December, you need to is whenever you do it. The weekend after Halloween, or after Halloween. Oh gosh, no. The weekend after Thanksgiving and the first week in December are usually. The close, thing. close, close enough. But yeah, I th- I'd say that like that first Saturday in December, uh, during like the college football championship games, you can decorate. Yeah, now I'm gonna go back and look. You're trying to find the video. <laughs> oh no, I'm just looking for when. Okay. Yeah. No. No, I put it up a week earlier this year mm-hmm. than you would have given me a credit for here. So yeah, we we. We started a week earlier than you would have said was was uh, proper. All right, our next topic will be the war on Christmas. Dun dun dun! Happy holidays. <laughs> You're talking about the uh, the war in the Middle East. I mean, that's happening on Christmas. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. So this is Christmas. So war what do you think drugs. about the war on Christmas? Um. Well, I. I think it is an interesting topic because it's one of those things that kind of arose during the the time period when there was there was just a lot of political things going on, uh, weaponizing holidays and <laughs> nostalgia, um, and uh, so I have interesting perspectives kind of from both sides, I guess, on it. One of the things I thought was really interesting, and I believe you'd probably touch on this, is the whole because you mentioned Xmas, mm-hmm. right? And I know people that are they're genuinely up in arms over the idea mm-hmm. of Xmas, that, that it is the removal of Christ from Christ Mass, um, and that it is it is the worst thing in the world. Um, not realizing that actually the origin of, of that, yeah. The, yeah, the, well, I was going to say the origin of the term Xmas is actually because Christos in Greek is an X, mm-hmm. and so like the the idea that uh, Xmas was really just shorthand for Christ mm-hmm. Mass, and uh, Anyway, so I think that there was a little bit of an overreaction to that personally. I the whole happy holidays thing. Uh, do you have a problem with happy happy holidays? Do I have a problem with happy holidays? Yes. Um, not really, except when people show a Christmas tree and then talk about Santa and, and then, then say then holidays, days. and I'm like, we already know which one you're talking about. Just say Merry Christmas. If you show me a menorah, I don't expect you to say. And have a happy holiday. Like, I mean, you can just say Hanukkah. I'm okay with it. And so I think that we just try to stay off of people's toes so much that it just kind of gets annoying. But I don't, you know, if you want to wish me a happy Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Festivus, go for it. Uh, happy winter solstice. Yeah, I mean, just just whatever. <laughs> just, just wish me the holiday that you want to wish me. Um, but don't try to stay off of my toes because I won't be offended if you wish me a happy Hanukkah. I won't be offended if you hand me a pole with cement in a bucket and say happy uh, Festivus. So Is just, that what you do for Festivus is you put a pole and yeah, a bucket with cement? You do. It's Festivus for the rest of us. Oh. And you put lights around it. Oh. Thank you, Seinfeld. Ah. So yeah, that's one of the pop culture. Like I am pop culturally aware of certain Seinfeld things, but that was one of the one one of my gaps. That yep. was one of my gaps. Now you, I, I believe that was Seinfeld. I, I think I'm remembering that. Correctly. I believe Festivus is a Seinfeld thing. Yeah. Now that I am thinking about it. All right. So uh, we've covered that. Any other 
pressing topics before we get to the most important topic that all these students are actually curious to know? Um, let's see. So... I don't know. Coach Bullock, do you have any suggestions? He's still ignoring us. He, that look, man. We're not, <laughs> we're not that dumb. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it is our name, but yep. whatever. Uh, so, and Miss Chrissy just rolled her eyes. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, Miss Brands. No, <laughs> we, we're not allowed to relay that to the, to the students. <laughs> She's not being very nice. Um, all right. So, we. Uh, I, I don't think I have anything else as long as uh, you know. At some point, we'll, we'll talk. You know, the real meaning of Christmas and and all of that. I think that kind of goes with the war on Christmas, but we'll save that. It'll be a nice touching end. That could, that could say for the end, and that could possibly be what we talk about next Maybe. Xmas, if this Maybe. thing is still That's going right. on. Uh, so, all the students want to know the weird thing. Uh, I don't know why they want to know this. They are constantly interested in this particular thing. What are you going to do over Christmas break? Um... The real reason I think that they want to know this is because it will take up class time. Um, <laughs> so now that it's not class time, they're probably reaching for the pause button. But the uh, the thing that I am going to do over Christmas is first come up with the most just absolutely hellacious testing schedule that I can um, to impose on them <laughs> next semester. Uh, that's probably going to be my first thing. I might actually, Christmas, before I open the presents, I might write two or three very, very, very difficult tests. And you know how we, like, accidentally leave mistakes on the tests that then we forget to put in the study guide? I'll probably seed some of those <laughs> through my next three or four weeks of quizzes. Um, so after I do all of that, then I'll probably hang out with some family and... Uh, I really enjoy actually going back through and reading the Christmas story, um, just digging through scripture and actually like reading, because there's several different accounts and you get different facts to it. Um, you get four different acts. And yeah, you, get, <laughs> you do. And uh, so just getting to kind of like read through that and, and being the history person I am, just look at that and, and realize, for one thing, um, like I said, we, we kind of have missed time to Christmas and that's a whole nother thing that that could actually be an entire podcast but uh but hearing why we do this is really interesting to me so I, I usually reread through that stuff and then uh go visit my parents where it's warm in Texas that's kind of my <laughs> everything's bigger in Texas man it is uh, every time I cross the border I'm six five <laughs> so it works. Uh, there you go. Uh, so what do you do over Christmas break? There uh, you go, uh, our quarterback. You asked for it. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, I, what do I do over Christmas break? I am going to play video games. As the one time, as the one week of the year that I play video <laughs> games. So I'm going to play video games. And then I'm going to traverse around the entire uh, Harrisburg, Paducah, Cape Girardeau, uh, viewing area for uh, media consumption, blah, 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 and visit my wife's family, and then visit my family, of course, here in Portageville. And who knows, I might actually go down to Alabama and visit my grandparents down there. Cool. I, uh, I think that we should take up, actually, uh, so we do very often uh, these news days on Wednesday, and we record these on Wednesdays, and uh, a student submitted, <laughs> there was a Christmas parade, uh, I forgot the location, probably Florida. Um, and a a gentleman, if you could call him that, was parading around the children's Christmas parade holding a sign that said Santa isn't real. Ah. And yelling it at the top of his lungs. And the police said they could not arrest him because it was free speech. speech. Yep. And uh, just got just about got in a fight with some parents. So I think, I think personally that we should uh, just invade various uh, children's parties. And you should go dressed as Santa and... And then I will pull off your mask to reveal that you are not real. Um, and uh, I could even accuse you of smelling like beef and cheese if we really want to go for the, the elf reference. But, I mean, I just, it's just fun. If you just want to hit me up over break, let me know if you're bored. Just, you know? uh, just uh, scar some children for life. Oh, yeah. That's what we do on a daily basis. Every though, day. Scar ch uh, adolescents for life. So might as well keep doing it over break. I mean, learning is power. But uh, if we can't get you by persuasion, we'll annoy you into it. So, 
All right. Uh, so you have the suggestions box. Do you want to kind of go possibly through the suggestions? Um, one of one of my one of my favorite ones, just right off the bat here, we have a, su- a suggestion, and uh, I believe this is actually well. I won't. I won't name any names. I, I believe I know who this is from, and it just says suggestion. Stop. Well, thank you. We know you don't listen Ms. to Brands, it anyway. Why did you go over um, here to the uh, box? I wasn't going to name names. <laughs> I wasn't going to name names. Um, talk about the school grading system. I actually think that is very intriguing. We had uh, a class period that actually spent a majority of the class discussing how various school do schools do grades. Um, that is actually worthwhile. Uh, Favorite movie snack? I guess we could have rolled that one into this one. Yeah, that could have been with the uh, Christmas movies. We have Talk Cars. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Vroom. I mean, I, I personally say Cars 1 is the best. If we're going to talk Cars, I, I say Cars 1. I don't, the Cars franchise is the worst. Throw out Pixar Cars 2. Is the worst of all the Pixar movies. It Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty bad. Um Oh, gosh. I'm not even going to read that one. Uh, oh, come on. I, you can put one suggestion in the box, everybody. One suggestion. Fine. Fine. We're almost done. We're almost done. Sorry for ruining the party. I'm, you These can people still just don't eat. know how to party. You can still eat. Just put your headphones in. It's what everyone else does. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll karaoke to Christmas songs later. And I promise I will only sing Meleke Meke Naka uh, 15 times. That becomes a different sentence every time you say it. And it I really don't know how I <laughs> it. It really amuses me. <laughs> um, we've got all kinds of rapper versus rapper debates. Uh, we have react to memes. Actually, uh, Probably not the most beneficial one, considering yeah, I mean, this is not a visual this podcast. Is, this is not visual. So if we ever go to a live visual type, then maybe we could do that. Um, and we have several talking about several talking about the school system. So we might we might do some nice meta things and talk about the school system. So those are possible topics we'll come back next year when do. We do have a podcast ready to go for next week, which will be our year in review. Uh, but uh, talk, uh, listen to those suggestions. Talk about what you might respond in the, bo- in the uh, comments down below of what you want us to talk about or go to Mr. Norman's room and stuff the suggestions box. Yep, we've got the suggestion box always ready. We do have some feedback on the last podcast. Uh, I asked the question, which side are we on in the ears? Yes. Someone said that I am on the left and... And you are on the right, and I usually listen to this to make sure like it sounds not as horrible as I think it sounds whenever we're recording it, but it's weird because whenever I do it, I actually think that I'm on the right, and you're on the left, despite the fact that right now, <laughs> I am on the left, and you are on the right. <laughs> Yes. I guess it all depends on where you're looking at us from, though, because they're looking at us out of the computer. And so if they're looking at us out of the computer, then, then you would be on the Then I'm on the left, left and you're on the right. But uh, the one comment that we had that said, I was on the left and you were on the right. <laughs> is correct if you are looking okay. at us from the door. From the door. It was Actually, from- then you're in the front and I'm in the back. Yes. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> but anyway, that was our one feedback that we got from last week. And I think that this has been a holly jolly two dumb white guys, Mr. Norman. I do believe so. And uh, so I guess we can go ahead and stop annoying the people in here. I'm looking at you. And I'm sorry I drank seven gallons of eggnog. I got dared to do it. I... I think you should probably also apologize to the school janitors for what is about to happen now. But on that note, uh, we have been, will be, and uh, hopefully are right now, two dumb white guys. I'm Scott Norman. And I'm Paul Davidson, and I am about to... uh, Let's just go ahead and cut the podcast off.